God created Arrakis to train the faithful. As a companion to Denis Villeneuve's adaptation of Frank Herbert's science fiction novel Dune, I've been exploring this universe and its unique elements, characters, and institutions. The Fremen play a significant role in the Dune saga, and in this video I'd like to delve into their society, culture, and some of their defining customs. Spoiler warning as many of these details are discovered through the course of the story of Dune. To come to an understanding of the Fremen, one must also know about the planet that shaped them, Arrakis. This deadly world is of vital significance to the universe. Over 20,000 years into the future, amidst a feudal interstellar society, all infrastructure depends on the precious resource that is only found here, the Spice Melange. A newcomer seeing Arrakis for the first time might mistakenly conclude that nothing could grow or live in this barren land. Intense heat, scarcity of basic resources, powerful sandstorms that can strip flesh from bone are but a few of the inherent dangers in this world. But there is certainly more than meets the eye, and astonishingly, the planet is teeming with life. Like the tales of treasure-hoarding dragons of old, giant territorial creatures called sandworms patrol the desert sea. The approach of one of these beasts is akin to a natural disaster. The planet has been terraformed to suit their needs. Everyone else must adapt or face extinction. The Fremen met this challenge. Thousands of years ago, their ancestors, known as the Zen Sunni Wanderers, migrated across the universe, inhabiting several planets as they fled persecution from Imperial raiders. Not much else is known by the Fremen regarding their ancestors prior to their arrival on Arrakis, as their history and origin has faded and parts distorted over the long passage of time. What is known is that their religion was based largely on the Sunni branch of Islam with Zen Buddhist influences, and Arrakis was the last stop on their pilgrimage through the galaxy where they found freedom, but at great cost. After their arrival on Dune, it was like a rebirth for them as a people. They became known as Fremen, whose entire way of life was then molded by their new environment. For generations to come, the Fremen's fight for survival in this harsh climate became their whole identity. The desert forged them into hardy and fierce warriors as they continued to develop their combat skills as a result of the cultural persecution they suffered in the past. As they are the first humans to inhabit Arrakis and having lived there for generations, they are considered as its native people. This was intentional as Frank Herbert drew inspiration for the Fremen from the indigenous cultures of Earth. The Fremen would often assemble in the rocky outcroppings scattered across the desert surface when they were in danger, so tribal communities took to living in these caverns called sieges for the protection it offered from the sandworms since they were unable to travel through or on rock. Each Fremen tribe is led by a Naib, who reaches his position of leadership by proving himself the strongest by challenging his predecessor in ritual combat to the death. This custom was to ensure the continued strength of the tribe, which is paramount to their survival. Some of their customs may seem strange or even callous to outsiders, yet their ways have been developed over generations of living in a constant state of survival mode. They do what is necessary for the good of the tribe. Many of their customs revolve around their most precious resource, water. While the spice melange is a major source of food for them, water is life. It is sacred to the Fremen. One of the cornerstones of the Fremen culture is that one's water belongs to the tribe. This is particularly evident by the fact that when a Fremen dies, their body is not buried or cremated, rather it is rendered down to its water and collected for the tribe. It is a great personal responsibility to preserve one's moisture, as carelessness could put great strain on the entire community. No one dares waste a drop of water except when it has great cultural significance. For example, when spitting as a sign of respect, or when mourning the loss of a loved one. During the Fremen funeral rite, if one sheds a tear for the deceased, it is viewed with profound reverence. Having to adapt to life with limited resources, they developed tools to aid in moisture collection, storage, and conservation. The most notable of which is the still suit, 
a specialized garment that keeps the body's water loss to a minimum by collecting, processing, and recycling the moisture a person expends in perspiration and waste. I talk about the Fremen still suit in greater detail in another video. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to learn more. The Fremen are a deeply spiritual people like their Zen Sunni predecessors, yet their religious customs and beliefs have gradually been molded over time by the Arrakis environment and the prophecies and legends that were seeded by the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood. The Fremen come to view the giant sandworm, or Shai Hulud, with veneration and believe them to be the physical manifestation of God from their original Zen Sunni faith. They have the utmost respect for the sandworm and the devastation it can cause. When traveling in the open desert, they walk in a non-rhythmic fashion so as to disguise their movements as the natural sounds of the landscape. Failure to adhere to this discipline could unintentionally draw the worm's attention and subsequent wrath. For the most part, the Fremen have come to coexist with these magnificent creatures, to such an extent that they are able to ride them when they follow the ways of properly summoning the worm. Even at a young age, a Fremen learns how to master this sacred way of transport, as it is especially useful for crossing long distances in the deep desert. While the sandworm is of great cultural significance to the Fremen, their religion also has the mark of Bene Gesserit manipulation. The branch of the sisterhood responsible for planting myths, prophecies, and legends on primitive worlds ensured their influence ran deep on this planet, as the Fremen's religious customs operate in much the same ways as the Bene Gesserit order. Every Siege has a Sayadina, which is a wise woman trained in the Fremen's spiritual traditions. A Sayadina can serve as a spiritual leader or as an acolyte to a priestess who, like the Bene Gesserit, has become a reverend mother by undergoing the same spice agony ritual, ingesting a poison called the Water of Life and rendering it non-lethal. In regards to the physical traits of the Fremen people, the most striking and a point of pride for them is what is referred to as the Eyes of Ibad, the signature deep blue within blue eyes that is indicative of one's blood becoming completely saturated with the spice melange. Living in a world where the spice is in the air and in the food, this outward sign of spice exposure exhibits pretty early on in childhood. A newcomer to Arrakis after continuous exposure to the spice will eventually display the eyes of Ibad after several years or so. Apart from the signature trait, the Fremen have tough, leathery skin as a result of the desert climate, and have also developed ultra-fast coagulation. The blood of a minor cut thickens quickly and stops almost immediately as a possible moisture-conserving mutation. Imperial houses, who are assigned by the Padishah Emperor to harvest the precious spice that fuels the commerce and industry of the universe, care little for the Fremen residents. They are generally looked down upon seen as a nuisance and hunted for sport by corrupt powers whose only concern is to collect as much of the lucrative spice as possible. The Fremen are thus severely underestimated. Desert survival and stealth and combat training to resist harsh occupying regimes have made them into formidable warriors, rivaling the Emperor's infamous Sardaukar killers. In a universe where personal shields are commonplace, rendering traditional projectile weapons obsolete, most soldiers have had to adapt to slower offensive strategies. The Fremen have a distinct home field advantage on Arrakis, since shield technology triggers the sandworms into a frenzy. Whereas most in the Imperium are trained to be fast on defense and slow on attack to penetrate a person's shield, the Fremen have no need for such techniques, and being slow to learn this can prove fatal to an enemy. Melee weapons are considered a necessity on Arrakis. The Fremen are said to compose poems to their knives, and none have greater significance to them than the fabled Chris Knife. It is considered the mark of a Fremen, and as such is not allowed to even be seen by outsiders, let alone taken off-world. This weapon is known to others only by rumor and wild gossip. Fashioned out of a dead sandworm's tooth, it is sacred to the Fremen. They are generally about 20 centimeters long, double-bladed, milky white with a faint glow to them. There are two versions of this unique weapon, unfixed, meaning that the blade would eventually disintegrate unless it is kept in close proximity to a human body's electrical field, and fixed blades, which are treated so that they would not disintegrate and could be kept in storage. This holy weapon is steeped in tradition, 
and also comes with great responsibility for the bearer. If a person outside of the tribe were to even see the blade, their life was then forfeit, as they would have to die by it. And if the weapon was drawn, it could not be resheathed without drawing blood first. There is much more than meets the eye when it comes to the planet Arrakis. Its people are no different. The Fremen secrecy has been an effective tool for their continued survival, but it is not just their customs and numbers that they keep carefully guarded. The Fremen also have enacted a hidden agenda to restore Arrakis to the green and lush planet it once was. Guided by the Imperial Planetologist and secret Fremen leader Dr. Liet Kynes, it is their goal to turn the desert world into a paradise, a home where their people would no longer just survive, but thrive without wanting for water ever again. But what would become of the Fremen without the planet that transformed them? This question is answered in detail as Frank Herbert's Dune Saga continues to unfold. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. And let me know your thoughts on the mysterious Fremen and the aspects of their culture you're most intrigued by. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.